I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, hey, that'll be a good cold open. Let's play my sneeze backwards. I've always wanted to hear what I sound like sneezing backwards. <laughs> one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, today I am doing my playlist video, my supposed to be monthly video in which I just talk about what I've listened to over the past month just for fun, not for any other specific purpose for my channel like the backtracks or bargain bag or whatever. And uh, yes, I say this is supposed to be a monthly video, but uh, you eagle-eyed viewers out there have noticed that I didn't have one for September and there's a, a good reason, well, Actually, it's not a very good reason for it. Uh, when I got to the end of September, I had a pathetically short list. Uh, this is my list for September, and that's the one for October. So, uh, yeah, that was all I had for September. So, And I don't know if it's because I just didn't listen to a lot of music during September, or if I was just really bad at writing down what I listened to. So and that's the kind of month that September was. I can't even remember half of what happened in, in September. That's just... But anyway, yes, uh, playlist is uh, on the docket for this month, and uh, before I get started actually in my playlist proper, I like to go over random thoughts or anything else that might have happened over the past month or so, and uh, sometimes it is untimely music passings, uh, you know, uh, deaths in the music world, uh, that have happened over the past month or so or since I did my last playlist video and that's what I have on the uh, agenda for this playlist. Yes, uh, several unfortunate passings over the past two months. Uh, starting off with Johnny Nash, he was 80 years of age and he was most famous for his hit song I Can See Clearly Now which reached number one in the US and Canada. It stayed at number one in the US for four weeks. So yes, a, a fantastic uh, songwriter. I'm not familiar with any of his other stuff other than that, so uh, I guess maybe I, I need to check out and see what else he did, because I can see clearly now was just, that was one of the best songs of uh, of its decade? 70s? Or was it the 60s? I cannot remember. Godspeed, Johnny Nash. And then also 80 years old, uh, when she passed away in September was Helen Reddy, uh, the Australian singer uh, who had 15 top 40 hits over her career. Six of those reached the top ten, and three of them hit number one, including her most famous song, the feminist anthem, I Am Woman. Fantastic uh, singer. I've got a CD of hers with her greatest hits on it. And she also happened to be in one of my favorite movies from my childhood, Pete's Dragon, the Disney movie, the original. And I've been wondering what I was going to watch tonight. I think I might watch that. I can't come up with anything else that I really am in the mood for, to watch, so I think I'll do that as a belated tribute to Miss Helen Reddy. And then we have Mac Davis, the singer-songwriter. He wrote a bunch of songs for Elvis Presley, among others. Uh, In the Ghetto and A Little Less Conversation were two of the Elvis Presley hits that he wrote, as well as uh, a song which was recorded and made famous by Helen Reddy, uh, the song called I Believe in Music. And he was also a successful singer in his own right, with uh, several top 20 hits, including Baby Don't Get Hooked on Me, which went number one on the country and pop charts. So, yes, another unfortunate passing at the age of 78, Mac Davis. And then next up on the list, we have Toots Hibbert, who died at the age of 77, uh, one of the pioneers of the reggae genre. Not one of my favorite genres. I've only dipped a little bit into reggae. Uh, I, I need to explore it more. Uh, and he was the front man for Toots and the Maytals. And one of the uh, interesting things I didn't realize until I was doing the research for this video was Toots and the Maytals' 1968 song, Do the Reggae, is basically how the reggae genre got its name. So not only was Toots Hibbert one of the pioneering practitioners of reggae in general, he is actually pretty much responsible for giving the genre its name in the first place. So rest in peace, Toots Hibbert. And then we have uh, Spencer Davis, uh, just passed away in the last week or so uh, at age 81. He was, of course, the frontman for the Spencer Davis group. And I am not familiar really at all with the Spencer Davis group. I've I'm sure I've heard a few of their biggest hit singles, just not that well versed in them, unfortunately. Uh, but I have enjoyed a fair bit of Steve Winwood's discography, uh, primarily his 80s and 90s work. Uh, and of course, uh, Steve Winwood, one of his first uh, bands was the Spencer Davis Group. So uh, maybe if it hadn't been for the Spencer Davis Group, we may not have Steve Winwood, or he may not be as popular as he eventually became. So yes, uh, rest in peace, Spencer Davis. And then, of course, the 
most popular name of the past uh, two months that has passed away was, of course, Eddie Van Halen, one of the preeminent rock guitarists of all time, and a lead guitarist for Van Halen, obviously, and the namesake for the band. Van Halen is not one of my favorite bands by any stretch, but uh, I am, of course, familiar with their hits. And yes, Eddie was such a huge, inseparable part of that group. Uh, his guitar work basically defined the sound of Van Halen, and uh, he uh, appeared on many other albums. I believe he appeared on Michael Jackson's Thriller album uh, in at least one song. I think he did a couple of guitar solos in that album, if I'm not mistaken. So, yes, uh, uh, Eddie Van Halen's uh, influence on rock is, goes far beyond just the band that he was in, Van Halen. So, Godspeed, Eddie Van Halen, and uh, those were not the only people who passed away in the world of music. I left some people off this list. So, yes, it was a, a pretty... Uh, unfortunate two months for uh, luminaries of the music world. So, uh, yeah. Rest in peace to all of the above mentioned and all the others who passed away in September and October. Okay, now on to the playlist proper for the month of, actually the months of October and September. And uh, you guys will be delighted to know that I gave just as much uh, exercise to my turntable as I did my CD player over these last two months. Uh, yeah, my uh, August playlist was pretty much exclusively CDs, I think. So, uh, Yes, you, you vinyl aficionados out there will be delighted to see the records coming up in a few minutes, but first of all, I thought I'd take care of the CDs. I have about a dozen each of CDs and LPs. Now, these first few, um, the late 80s, early 90s, is kind of a special moment in music history for me, uh, my own personal music history, that is. That is when I uh, first got my CD player, and it was uh, my first job, so I was basically able to spend my paycheck how I, si how I saw fit. I was not living on my own at that time. Uh, and so I, of course, you know, was just starting to get into music, and I just decided to, I just wanted to put my feelers out there as much as I possibly could. So I just started buying CDs, not knowing the artists at all, and, you know, just kind of uh, flying blind or, or deaf, as the case may be. And I actually found a f handful of good, uh, good stuff that I've managed to keep all these years and have have since grown on to be some of my favorite albums of the past. And one of those, uh, although I actually gave this one up a while ago, uh, probably 15 years or so ago, for lack of shelf space, but I eventually picked it up again recently just because I, I missed it, you know. And that was a group called This Picture. They are a rock band, and uh, as the cover kind of suggests, they were basically a mixture of The Cure and The Doors. Kind of, if you if you can picture a blend of those, and this was early 90s, I believe, 1991. So it's kind of an, an alt-rock, so interesting stuff. I really enjoy their stuff. And then we have uh, two albums by, this is an artist from that same period that I had not checked out until just recently at uh, Epic Seconds. One reason I was getting at this uh, early 90s thing when I was reminiscing about the early 90s just now is they happen to have a whole bunch of CDs from that period that were in really, really good condition. So... Uh, I just decided to pick a handful of them up and see if uh, any more of uh, artists from that group that I hadn't listened to until now I ended up liking. And this was one of the artists, the Katie Dids. Uh, they actually only put out two albums, and they actually had both of them there at, that, at the Epic Seconds dollar section. They're a self-titled album as well as Shangri-La. And these guys are, they kind of remind me of The Sundays. If you guys have ever listened to The Sundays, they're kind of a jangle pop group fronted by a female vocalist. Good stuff. Uh, you, you might want to check them out. I have no idea if they're even on streaming services or not. But uh, yeah, good stuff. Kind of mellow, dreamy sort of stuff. You know, cool, nice Sunday afternoon kind of stuff, I guess you'd say. So, And then uh, another uh, kind of a random CD here. Random-ish, but I mean, it's here because I listened to it over the past month. And this was actually also in the dollar section at Epic Seconds. Manilow Sings Sinatra. So yes, a, a, an album of Sinatra covers by Barry Manilow. Pretty good stuff. I'm, I've got, uh, oh, five Barry Manilow CDs. I got his series of um, best songs of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. I got all those. And I also have his uh, um, essential Barry Manilow. And yeah, so I've kind of been on a, a Barry Manilow kick over the past year or two. So. And for one dollar, I mean, honestly, how can you uh, turn it down, really? And then also kind of in the same vein, but a very, very recent release. It's actually the most recent release by Diana Krall. I was going to do this in my um, uh, Spank and Platters video uh, last week, but I couldn't, honestly couldn't think of a whole lot to say about it, enough to really fill a slot on the Spank and Platters video. But yeah, just, just as great as Diana Krall has ever been. If you like, if you like her stuff, 
this album will not disappoint. And this is actually some kind of leftovers from her last sessions with her longtime producer Tommy Lee Puma, who passed away uh, the last year or year before. So yeah, this was kind of a farewell to uh, her recording relationship with Tommy Lee Puma. A fantastic album. Uh, but Beautiful is the lead-off track. I really like that one. Singing in the Rain, she closes with that one. That one's a good one. And Almost Like Being in Love. Fantastic album. And then this next one, uh, kind of like uh, this picture, the one I let, let off with. This is a CD that I had before, got rid of, I think it was for lack of shelf space, regretted that decision, so I went and picked it up in a bargain priced eBay lot. And oh, actually, this is the two disc deluxe version. So I actually, this is a different version than the one I previously had. So it is Laura Mvula, her first album, Sing to the Moon. Wonderful stuff. She's, she's kind of like Sade, but a bit more world music inspired and not so much the jazz angle that Sade does. But yeah, she's just fantastic. She has collaborated over the uh, recent years with Jamie Cullum and with Jacob Collier and uh, one or two other artists. And uh, in, in part, it was those collaborations that made me miss this album and made me want to get it again. So I've also um, found her uh, her sophomore album and it's on the way. I haven't gotten it yet, but yeah, it's just wonderful stuff. If you like Sade, I think you'll like Laura Mvula. Check her out. And then uh, a couple of other uh, bargain eBay lots that I got. Uh, this is an artist that I'd been wanting to try out for a while and just kind of kept putting it off and putting it off. And But uh, yeah, this is actually the same seller that sold me the Laura Mvula CD. Uh, this is, I bought these from them also. It's a rock band called Everything Everything. And this is their album, Get to Heaven. Uh, this is my favorite of the two. But, yeah, just great uh, kind of electro rock, kind of like The Killers. They, they remind me a little bit of The Killers in some places, and maybe a little bit of, I don't know, U2, but not quite as epic as U2 is, so if, if that makes sense. And then this is their other album, A Fever Dream, the other album by Everything Everything. This is the predecessor, I think? No, the, the follow-up. This is a follow-up to uh, this one. So yeah, good stuff. I, I am partial more to Get to Heaven than I am uh, A Fever Dream, but they're both good. And then we have, this was actually a CD that I almost, I, I actually owned for a while, and I almost put in my trade-in stack, but I listened to it one last time because something in my head told me to, and I ended up keeping it. Uh, Patrick Wolf, he's kind of a, a bit of an art pop sort of artist. Uh, interesting stuff, reminds me a little bit of Mika or uh, Rufus Wainwright, so kind of along those lines. But yeah, this is his uh, album, The Magic Position. Uh, good stuff. I'm thinking about picking up his uh, follow-up album. I haven't uh, jumped to that gun yet. And uh, this one, this artist has an interesting story. Um, this is another, incidentally, one that I found in a bargain eBay lot. Uh, a friend of mine pointed me to one of these guys' songs, which, uh, and he knows that I like kind of like a roots, roots rock world music kind of stuff, and I actually ended up liking it. Uh, I don't think I had ever heard of this band before, but yeah, I like that song. So that prompted me to pick up uh, their three albums. I'm only going to show two of them to you today. It is a band called Rusted Root, and this is their album When I Woke. This has that big, that hit song on here. Oh, Send Me On My Way. I think that, that's the, the song that uh, my friend pointed me to. And then this is, I believe, their follow-up album, uh, Remember. And I've also got uh, one of their others, so yeah, and they're all really good. But uh, yeah, if you like kind of roots rock with a little bit of world music in it, check out Rusted Root. They're a good. They were from the 90s. Uh, yeah, 1994 is when When I Woke uh, came out, and then uh, 96 is when Remember was released. So, and then this next artist, these guys are actually from the 80s, and I. I mean, I knew of them back in the 80s when I was a kid listening to music, but uh, I never explored beyond their one big single from the 80s, and that is on this album, incidentally. But uh, yeah, I, Midnight Oil is the band, and uh, yeah, their big single, Beds Are Burning, that was, I think, their biggest hit from the 80s. This is an Australian band, and yeah, I never bothered checking out their stuff until three weeks ago, a month ago, and I was won over big time. I mean, I've I love this album. As good as Beds Are Burning was, the rest of the album is just great. And uh, yeah, it's, I, I'm going to have to check out the rest of these guys' discography in earnest. I have a f strong feeling that I'm going to start buying their albums um, in quick succession here. But yeah, fantastic stuff. And the frontman for Midnight Oil actually ended up uh, going into politics in his native Australia and yeah, becoming a, a member of parliament, I think. I don't remember the, the specifics, but yeah. Uh, somewhat on the progressive side, so yeah. And I think Beds Are Burning 
if I'm uh, not mistaken, or maybe some of the other songs on this album, were meant to bring attention to the plight of the indigenous Australians, who, like the indigenous populations of most other countries in the, around the world, are being, well, pooped on culturally. And something I just don't understand, but anyway, yeah, that's a whole other subject. And then rounding out the CDs portion of my playlist is a few soundtracks. Uh, I, I just talked about a soundtrack in my uh, uh, bargain bag video, but yeah, I'm not done talking about soundtracks yet. Uh, a few soundtracks that I was able to acquire recently that I've been wanting for a long, long time. First off is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yes, believe it or not, back in the 80s, they never made an official soundtrack album for this movie. <laughs> Can you believe it? But yes, it was up to the independent label La La Land Records. They specialize in reissues of uh, classic film soundtracks. And this is one of them. This has most of the songs from the movie, as well as the complete score by Ira Newborn. So yeah, it's fantastic stuff. And yeah, I, I've been wanting a long time to get my hands on this. And of course, being a small independent label, they of course could not get the licensing for the Beatles version of Twist and Shout. So yeah. D don't fault them for that song not being on there. They don't They don't have $35 trillion to pay the licensing fees. Then a couple of other soundtracks also from La La Land Records. The scores from the first two Karate Kid movies by Bill Conti was the composer for those two. And yes, I like the uh, song soundtracks for the movies, as, as, but as much as I like those, what I paid attention to back then was the score, the orchestral or instrumental scores for the movies. One of my first big musical loves was... Uh, orchestral soundtracks, uh, John Williams, the Star Wars movies were like the first one that just did it for me, and I just kind of went on from there. But yeah. Well, that concludes the CD portion of my playlist, and now on to the part of the video that you vinyl hounds have no doubt been waiting for, my playlist of vinyl LPs that I listened to over the past month, or two months actually. Uh, and I'm going to start out with a few records that could be considered novelty albums, I guess, in a way. Uh, first one is, uh, well, I'll explain why in just a minute here. Uh, Julie Brown and her album Trapped in the Body of a White Girl, along with orchestral soundtracks, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, one of my early music loves was uh, novelty music or comedy songs, and so I was a dedicated religious listener at the time to the Dr. Demento show. Uh, he was uh, It was a radio show where he would play funny songs, uh, and this is how I became aware of Julie Brown was through the Dr. Demento show. And yes, this one has... Uh, one of the songs on here is I Like Him Big and Stupid. And then we have, I'm wondering if maybe I should do a list or a video sometime of songs that are now, or albums that are now politically incorrect, that were not thought of as being such back in the day. Uh, now, before I, let me preface this by saying this was 1987, back when this scenario was so completely unlikely, unfathomable, unforeseeable, that it was considered absurdist comedy. The last song on this album is called The Homecoming Queen's Got a Gun. Yes. I really hope I don't lose any viewers by saying this, but for some reason, when I listen to this song, part of me still enjoys it. Just because when I listen to it, my brain takes me back to that time. My 17-year-old uh, self is listening to it, as opposed to my you know, 50-year-old self. So, uh, you know, it's, it's in that context that I say I still, part of me still enjoys the song. So just, uh, I mean, and it, it was well done. I mean, you know, the, the uh, melody, the, uh, the the song structure, I guess you'd say, was, it was well done. You know? And yeah, th this was a pretty good album, honestly. And uh, it was funny. It had its funny moments. So yes, as I said, you know, take with that what you will. Maybe I should just move on. Uh, the next album on my playlist today is Junk Food Junkie by Larry Gross. And uh, the title track is another song that uh, I became famous on the Dr. Demento show. And yes, it is, you know, as the title kind of suggests, he's, he's talking about his addic addiction to junk food. And the rest of the album, though, is uh, it does have some comedy on it, but it's not all comedy. Some of it is a bit more, a bit more straight ahead, maybe more subtlety in the humor, maybe more satire than all out comedy. But uh, yeah, this was actually a more entertaining album than I expected it would be. So, yeah. And I don't know how many albums he uh, put out, but I and I think this was his most famous. So, but yeah, it was a fun little album of kind of a uh, semi-country-ish folk, more than country, I guess. 
And then the next artist here is uh, much more popular than Larry Gross or Julie Brown. It is Ray Stevens. And I actually found this album in the, on the freebie shelf at House of Records. And uh, I've got a few albums that I found on the freebie shelf. But yeah, I can't tell the copyright date because the uh, the back of the cover is has a little bit of water damage on it. So, uh, which is why probably why it was in the freebie section. Uh, yeah, the the album itself was in very very good condition. So, uh, but yeah, and it has his most popular hits, uh, "The Streak," and "Everything Is Beautiful," and "Guitars Anne. There is a song on here, and this actually kind of fits in with the uh, politically incorrect theme that I'm thinking about uh, taking on later. Ahab the Arab. It's not one of my favorite uh, uh, Ray Stevens songs, so I'm neutral about it. But yeah, the, the title could be a little bit uh, construed as a little bit uh, politically incorrect nowadays. And then the, uh, the next one, which was also a, freebies, uh, a freebie find at House of Records, uh, believe it or not, was uh, Honky Chateau by Elton John. Yeah. And uh, probably on the freebie shelf mainly because the cover is kind of thrashed. Uh, the, the record was okay. It has a couple of pops and clicks in places, but uh, yeah, one of Elton John's best albums, in my opinion. The track listing's on the back flap, which was tucked inside. Uh, Honky Cat, of course, one of his bigger hits. And Rocket Man and um, Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's. So yeah, fantastic Elton John album. And then another one that was on the freebie shelf was Chester and Lester. Yeah, Chet Atkins and Les Paul. Uh, a very good album. I had I'd actually been meaning to pick this one, this one up for a while. I had seen it in the CD section, the used CD section, and I almost bought it a couple of times and would have paid money for it. But uh, I was eventually able to pick up the LP for free. And yeah, same thing, the, the cover is kind of uh, trashed. There actually was a uh, big obnoxious label on it. You can actually see the uh, the stain from it. And so that's probably why it was on the freebie shelf. Or Actually, it was just the residue from the label. And there were hairs and stuff stuck to it. So, yeah. Yeah, who'd want to touch it, right? And I, I was a little bit, uh, probably a little bit more reckless than I should have been at getting the gunk off. But I actually managed to get it off with no uh, wear to the cover. So, yeah. yay me. But yeah, fun album. If you like uh, country and folk um, guitar work, if you like guitar work, instrumental guitar work, give this stuff uh, a try. Uh, it Had to Be You and Out of Nowhere are a couple of uh, the Great American Songbook standards that they cover on here. And then this next one was also a freebie shelf find at House of Records, uh, Bridge Over Troubled Water by Peggy Lee. Yes, a lot of ring wear, a lot of cover wear, major cover wear you can see kind of munched up on the uh, edges there. So yeah, that's why it was on the freebie shelf. But uh, some surface noise on the record, but it didn't skip. So hey. And then, uh, yes, yeah, uh, of course, the cover, the, the uh, title track by... Uh, Paul Simon and uh, Art Garfunkel. And then we have uh, Always Something There to Remind Me, which uh, Dion Warwick made famous. And then Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head. So yeah, a bunch of good stuff on here. So, yeah. I'm not necessarily a, a Peggy Lee fan. I have one of, other, one of her other albums. But it's like, you know, again, when it's free, I'm going to pick it up and give it a try. And these next two albums I actually got uh, from a friend of mine who was clearing out his record collection and... Uh, gave me a list of what he was getting rid of, and I, I decided to take him up on these two. Orange Blossom Special by Johnny Cash. Uh, and again, I'm not a huge Johnny Cash fan, but uh, I decided to, you know, seize the opportunity. Well, these, he was offering these up to me for free, but I ended up paying him for them, so uh, you know, that'll show you. Uh, the one really, really great Johnny Cash song that uh, you, you, might, you might need to call up on uh, Spotify or YouTube or whatever and listen to it yourself. All of God's Children Ain't Free. And that is such an apt song for right now. But this album was done in, what, the 60s, I think? But yeah, that is an absolute standout on this album. Uh, but yeah, I mean, hey, Johnny Cash, he almost didn't put out a bad album, really. Uh, Don't Think Twice It's Alright, which was a Bob Dylan song, I believe. But yeah, that song, All of God's Children Ain't Free, stunning. Wonderful, amazing song. Great, great song. And this, this other album I also got from my friend, uh, ostensibly for free, but I paid him for it. Uh, the self-titled debut album by The Village People. Yeah. Why not, right? And this one was actually still sealed. Some of their uh, bigger hits, San Francisco and In Hollywood, Everyone's a Star, Everybody is a Star. So, yeah. uh, again, not the biggest uh, Village People fan, but yeah. like I said, if it's free, I'm going to take it. And sometimes I'm going to pay for it. And then these next two, uh, I, I don't think I showed these uh, to you guys yet, but uh, he, yeah, he just recently passed away. And, uh, but I actually decided I wanted to dip more into his discography. Uh, he was featured on my A to Z a couple of months ago. 
and I liked his first album, that, that album, so much uh, that I decided to pick up some more of his albums, and that was actually before he passed away, uh, Trini Lopez, and I got his uh, The Rhythm and Blues album, as well as, uh, oh, this is just his self-titled album, Tr Trini. Good stuff. I, I like his voice. There's just something about his voice that I really like, and uh, very much enjoyed these albums, and uh, House of Records has a couple more Trini Lopez albums in stock that I might pick up, too, so these were very modestly priced. So, so it's too bad that I didn't really get to enjoy Trini Lopez until uh, right about the time that he passed away. So, yeah. And then a couple albums here that uh, I could add to the list of albums that I used to have on CD that I tra traded up for vinyl. Uh, what Up Dog, the album by Was Not Was. This is the group that uh, now famous producer Don Was started back in the late 80s. So yeah, this was their debut album, I think. I can't remember. I, I've never been able to get straight the order of their albums, but yeah, I had this one on CD for a long time, but uh, yeah, when I saw it come in in the New Arrivals rack at House of Records, I had to pick it up. But yeah, Spy in the House of Love is one of their big hits on here, and one of the most fun songs that came out of the 80s, Walk the Dinosaur, is on this album. If you're not familiar with that song, Walk the Dinosaur, check it out. It's, it's great. And then two albums, one of which I used to have on CD, by Bonnie Tyler, and this is the one that I used to have on CD, uh, Faster Than the Speed of Night, and this one as well as its follow-up, Secret Dreams and, and Forbidden Fire, were both produced by Jim Steinman, who was uh, famous for his collaborations with Meatloaf. Faster Than the Speed of Night is the album that her big hit, uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart, came off of. So, yeah. Great artist, and I'd never really sampled her stuff until just in the last couple of years. So. Yeah. And then uh, this is also one that I had... Oh, actually, no. No, I didn't have this one on CD. I, I had their greatest hits on CD. and But this one had all the songs that I really cared about having, so I ended up trading in their greatest hits CD later on. But uh, yeah, this one is Slade, a, a hard rock band from the UK that was back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, this is their 87, 1984 album, Keep Your Hands Off My Power Supply. Uh, in the UK, it was released under a different title and a different cover art. I cannot remember what the title was in the UK, but uh, pretty much the same track listing. And uh, yeah, this album actually has two my two favorite Slade songs on it, and it actually starts out with those two songs, Run Run Away and My Oh My. Fantastic songs, some of the best uh, hard rock songs of the 80s on this album. And well, actually, one of those was a ballad. But yeah, Slade is probably most well known for their original recording of Come On Feel The Noise, which those of you uh, who think that it was a Quiet Riot original, no, Quiet Riot actually covered covered it. It was originally done by Slade. So yes, uh, uh, one of the better hard rock bands to come along in the 80s and 90s. At least here in the States, they were kind of overlooked in favor of the other, many other hard rock and hair metal bands. Uh, of that era. So yeah, good stuff. Uh, check out that album and check out the band if you haven't yet. And I have saved the best for last uh, by a long shot. And also, uh, in contrast to pretty much all the other LPs that I showed you, this is by far the newest one. Uh, it was actually released just last year. And uh, a while back, you know, years and years ago, when I was browsing in a record store, I, you know, and I heard something that I liked, I decided, oh, I'd pick it up and buy it there while I was at the store just kind of on impulse, but uh, I stopped doing that after a while because there were three or four purchases in a row that I did that with that I got tired of the album after a couple of weeks. As, and you know, so it's like my, my, my impulse was a little too impulsy. So I you know forced myself to stop that habit. For this one though, I made an exception. Uh, I was at House of Records uh, three weeks ago, I think, uh, browsing around, and they put this album on in the uh, stereo, and I was it just grabbed my ear instantly. Drew, drew me to it like a magnet for some reason. And uh, partly because one of the songs on it, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute, was actually on an Americana compilation that a friend sent to me for free. And so I recognized that song subconsciously when they started playing the album at House of Records. And, uh, but yeah, the next song and then the song after that and the one after that, just each song on this album was just wonderful. It just captivated me like, I, like you wouldn't believe. But anyway, let me stop talking about it and tell you what it is. It is Pony by Orville Peck. Uh, Orville Peck is a Canadian country artist. He's, he's pretty much marketed or, or uh, described mainly as country, which is kind of, you know, you can't blame them for marketing him as country, but because he's got cowboy boots on the back cover of the album. But uh, 
boxing him into the country genre doesn't do him justice and actually this was not filed in the country section at house of records it was filed in the regular rock and pop section and in my opinion that's more apt because this when I listen to Orville Peck, and particularly the song that I mentioned a minute ago that was on that compilation, Dead of Night, that is actually the opening track on this album, listen to that song. Uh, but yeah, when I listen to Orville Peck, I hear uh, early Roy Orbison, uh, both in his the way his voice sounds and also in the sonic palette that he's backed with. He kind of has kind of this uh, uh, deep, spooky, kind of cavernous sound to the instruments. Uh, you probably... Uh, know at least vaguely what I'm talking about uh, if you've heard Roy, uh, early Roy Orbison. And uh, he also has a, uh, a vocal resemblance to Johnny Cash. Uh, in fact, they also played a 7-inch uh, single before they played this album, and I could have sworn it was Johnny Cash on vocals, but it was actually Orville Peck on vocals. So, And I actually bought that one too at the same time. I liked it so much. But yeah, uh, if you have not checked out Orville Peck, uh, you got to give him a try, especially if you don't mind country Americana-ish sounding stuff, upbeat folk that kind of bleeds a little bit into the country genre. Uh, check it out, and especially if genre lines don't matter to you, check out Orville, Orville Peck. Uh, I am anxiously awaiting his next album just to see if he does, uh, if it's as good as this one. I kind of don't think it will be because this one, as I said, just knocked my socks off. Just fantastic. But anyway, enough about Orville Peck. I, I want to keep on talking about him, but I don't want to make this video an hour and a half long. So anyway, yes, that'll do it for my playlist for the month of October 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.